ATC Creo Parametric 3.0 Part 2. The taper coupling will be the next component that we cover. And again, you have a whole set of drawings that cover every aspect of this particular model. So you want to look very closely. There is in the PDF a blow up or a close up of almost every one of the features so you can see what's going on. Give you also some ideas. We'll show some of the ideas here. When we do the lecture, you'll see you have some alternatives. Again, this was modeled a long time ago and used some um, different techniques. The main thing in this particular one is paying attention to the, to the rounds here and when you're doing the taper. The other thing to mention right now is that there are a lot of features in this and people tend to try to do too much at once. Uh, over here in this uh, section AA, we can see that that uh, we have a taper cut and then we have a counter couple counterboards with some different uh, little pieces of geometry down in here. This should not be put in as one feature and we're going to see what happens uh, when that does occur and it's better to break it into one complete taper cut and then add the counterbore from the other side and then maybe a few of the little tiny features like rounds or something last rather than trying to do the whole section at one time. People try to get greedy and it actually makes it go a lot slower in the modeling process when we do that. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, well, I guess to keep it like it is, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we're going to take a look at this part. And again, let's go over to our model player and head to the very beginning of the part. You have your datum features. And then you have your first revolved feature. And again, this is, this is done well. You could put this big giant arc in here because it's really in the sense of being so large, you can call it a round fillet, but in reality, you could have put it in here. The reason why we didn't is because we wanted to have the opportunity of using this surface here as a placement for um, uh, other features. And by having the round independent, it gives us some flexibility in the modeling process. Second feature here is, Let's go back and turn on my spin center because the middle is a small model, not a long model. And we have an additional feature added down here. Another one. And then we have the main one. And this is the most important one that we have. Again, you can see the person got greedy and tried to do everything all at once. Most of the other ones are fairly simple features. Here we put in a datum plane. This was unnecessary, but they did it. And we'll show you a different method. There's our slot or our key seat. And again, it's put in in a very odd way. And then we have our counter bore hole, more revolved cut. And we have another hole here over here, but it's fairly simple. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, first of all, let's go for the uh, major feature down the middle here. And we're going to go and edit the definition of that feature. And then we'll go back directly into its section and show the sections. And you can see here, an awful lot is going on at one time. It makes it more difficult to do. Also, before I even get here, I want to take a look at one other thing. Just because it can be done doesn't mean it's a good idea. So if we take a look at this, I want to make sure our slot goes all the way through for the key seat. But if you look closely, what's going on here? Whoever modeled this didn't go all the way through. So they're left with a little tiny ledge here. If they would have made the cut either go all the way through or you know modeled it correctly, or instead, if they would have only done the taper cut first, this would have pierced this and gone all the way through. Right now, they've got a little tiny ledge there. It's small, but it's there. All right. so. Let's go back where we were. We're going to edit the definition of that feature and go into its section and look at the section. And let's see. 
let's go with no hidden lines. All right. So at the top here, we've got a variety of entities that we want to take a look at. A couple of fillets. And at the bottom, we got a whole lot of stuff. Now, in reality, what should have been done is only this portion here should have been cut out. None of this down here should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the bottom part. And again, this is referenced by a bunch of other stuff. And I'm going to continue this end of this all the way to the very, very bottom. Not up here, the very bottom. No matter what happens to this part in its size, this cut will always go through. All right? Now, we do want a line to close it up on the bottom. Mouse button, and there's our feature. Now, we're still getting an odd dimension here. This dimension shouldn't be showing up. We're getting a very odd dimension over here also. So whoever did this have some oddities going on. I'm going to try to get rid of them by adding some constraints and see what happens here. So let's say coincident for that and... And get rid of it. Now, if you can't get rid of something, you, you, all you need to really do is double click on the dimension, whatever it is, and make it bigger. So we're going to make this one five and hit enter. And you can see that line was not locked into the reference. So, and I had a hard time picking it up using the previous method. So I'm going to do coincident. I'm going to select here and here, get rid of that dimension, and it's gone. Now, the same thing, something's going on with this dimension here too. Why do we have a height dimension 115? That doesn't make any sense. So instead what we want to do is check down here and see what's going on. So coincident again and I'm going to hit the end point and then over here and then you can see that is locked in. So it's gone now. Right? So that height dimension is gone. we got a couple of dimensions in here that are iffy. We'll leave them in for right now. So if you were doing it correctly, this is what you'd end up with. Ah. There is something in this particular part when I start doing this that the features are so old, they're using old technology in it, but you can see this one goes all the way through. Okay, then you add the counter bore. How simple. You just add the counter bore at the end. This will always remain going all the way through. And then we'll go back. And there's another thing in here, just to be able to show you the sketching technique. We'll go back in and take a look at the top portion here. And in fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take everything out. Hopefully it doesn't take too many of these yeses to get it through, these reference to other places. So you want to start off with, by the way, if you want to click on a reference, let's say this one right here, and hit delete, you can get rid of a reference. We don't need a reference there. We do need one down the middle. Placed. So those are the only references we need. So when we're doing the sketch, in reality, this is the way we should do it. You can start here, come over, put it at an angle. Don't get a little tiny angle. I know it's two degrees. And by the way, this angle and the one that goes for the taper cut must be identical to the whatever, fourth or more decimal place. So instead of trying to do it just a little tiny angle, just make it make it a little bit bigger. It's not going to hurt. Now what I'm going to do with this one a little bit different, I'm going to, instead of locking it into the top, I'm going to stop right about, let's say right about here. Like so. Middle mouse button a couple times. And there's my angle line. We'll worry about that, the dimension of that later. But what we want to do is finish the upper portion here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to select my fillet, and I'm going to click on the end point here. I'm sorry. Fillet, click on the line. And, no, I'm sorry. Let's not do that. Let's go and select the arc, three-point arc. This is better. You're going to, you can see what happens here. I'm going to be able to position this. I want to aim towards this. I don't want to go way over here, or over here, or up. I want to aim towards it at a little bit of a kind of like a arc angle, if you want to call it that. In other words, if you continue the tangency of it, it would lock into there. I'm just going to go up to here like so, middle mouse button. 
Then I want to put it in the fillet. And I want to put it in the fillet from here to here. See what it did? It put a tangency, a tangency, a tangency. All built in for me. So I've got a line, a line, a few arcs, and I need to enclose it. So I'm going to click here, here, and then go back to my origin. Middle mouse button a couple of times. And then I deal with my angle. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the angle that I want, let's see here, is between here and here. And that one's supposed to be 2.825, I think, or close, whatever. You need to look that up closely. And then I need to have my dimensions. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll go over to here and come down, and we'll see that we have 50, 4, and 8, and 12. So this is 8. This is, um, I think it's 4. And this one is 12. I think I should have done it in another sequence, but it worked out. So those are the dimensions that you want in there. In reality, there is another dimension that you're going to need. A little odd, but you want to be able to pick up on the point here of tangency, the center line, and then the point, and then the middle mouse button. Oh, didn't get it. That's because I never bothered to put in a axis of revolution, which I should have done. All right, so it gave me that dimension. That's not the dimension I want. I want the dimension from the point to the center line to the point, middle mouse button. And it says in the uh, in the PDF, 50. Um, in reality, you're going to have to make this 55, and that's done usually when you're in the assembly, so that you can make the tapered um, the the uh, shaft go into the tapered coupling deeper. So if you want to make this 55 right now, that's that's a valid way to do it, just to let you know you're going to have to change things later. Um, I think I covered that somewhere in the... Uh, okay, so when creating the assembly, you may need to modify to 54. I said 55. All right, so it's up to you when you want to do that. When you're in the assembly and you can see it going deeper, you have more... You, know, you have to push it into it a little bit more. All right, so this is really just to show you how to do this. And again, you don't want to be adding all that counterbore information in here. Just too much work, okay? And if you need to change something like the counterbore or delete some portion of that geometry, you'd have to go all the way back to this section in the first revolved cut. And you don't want to have to do that. You want to have these separated. The taper cut is completely separate from the counterbore cut. That way they can be altered separately if there's an ECO. And I'll come out of here. All right, so then we have a couple of holes, and these are just put in as, a, as with the hole tool. Nothing fancy there. What you do want to do, pay attention to, though, is how you put them in. So this put in person put them in as a radius. Well, radiuses don't exist except for on rounds. Everything's a diameter, so you need a bolt circle. So this person should have used diameter, like so. And then that way, this 125 will show up as a dimension on the drawing for the bolt circle. The other reference here, you, the surface is the reference of placement, and the axis is a reference, and then datum plane 3 is what we're re-rotating it from, in other words, the angle measurement. But we want diameter as the type. And then there's a simple pattern after that. back to the beginning. Last one is the hole, counterbore. And let's go in and see what they did with this one. This is an old slot command. So I'm going to click on section, OK. Certain aspects, oops, sorry. Certain, acts, uh, certain aspects of it are the same. When we get in here and we're going to create it, you will see what we have. So basically, this is just a revolved cut. 
don't worry about the word slot. You are placing it as references on the top and on the bottom. You have a center line here and you have a reference over here, but no center line. So what we'd like to do, this is your axis of revolution. If you click on it, designate it as the axis of revolution. If that's when you're creating it, you're going to create it with the axis of revolution rather than in this particular method. And I'm going to add a center line down the middle here and then add a dimension and we will pick on the line and the center line and then the line or the opposite middle mouse button and let's delete that so we have a bolt circle dimension And there's our cut. Now, where you put that feature in, by the way, if a feature is highlighted, you can go right mouse button, locate in model tree, and it'll show you where that is. If you have 500 or if you have 3,000 features, it sometimes it's difficult to find. So that's the way you would do it. So you can see it's in this group that we did. But this round is way down here. If the round was above, see how far up I can get it. This would happen over the top. So where it is is important. Again, if you put it up here, you can always take it and you can drag it down farther so it's out of the way and it propagates the, the cut that you have there. Now, there's a variety of ways of doing that also with the cut. So, for instance, um, okay, the model tree. Um, I think I'll delete this one or maybe just suppress. And let's put another one in with a, just a general cut, wrote, revolved cut, remove material. Remember to do that. We're going to be on this face here somewhere. And, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Let's cancel that out. Yes. And let's say for our sketching plane, we're actually going to use the datum plane here down the middle for our sketching plane. Thought I had my internet shut off, but I keep getting stuff. All right, so basically we're going to be sketching on that datum plane. I'm going to go into the sketch view, and the main thing to start is putting in your references. So let's do hidden line, right mouse button references, and let's select the top here, the the uh, the bottom here, and let's also do something a little bit different. Let's select the edge here. So we're selecting the top of the round. Okay, so no matter where the round is, however big it gets, this cut should always go through it. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to put in a axis of revolution, like so. And we do also want to have a construction center line, like so. So. It is the, this is the axis of revolution. Now, we can do our traditional method of, like we just did before, we can actually make a counter bore. Dimensions aren't important. We can always change them later, like so. There's our counter bore. Let's see if we've got it. Okay. Check. Shading of edges, and there's our counter board.
and let's say let's make this uh, uh, 18. I think I'll go back into the sketch itself. It's a little bit easier to move around. About like that. It's good enough. So, finish the feature. And you can see it's underneath. So, if you, depending on when you put that round in and you put the cut in and all that, we talked about it. But there is another way to do this. And again, this is mainly for just showing you how to construct geometry, not just this particular case. So instead of making it like this, and here's our dimension for our, our, our uh, counterbore. So we, we do want this dimension for the counterbore eventually in there. But when you're sketching this, let's do it a little bit different. Um, let's pretend like we don't have anything. Well, actually, let's get rid of everything. Okay, oh, we got some more jump down here. And I keep picking up what I'm trying not to do, and I should not worry about it. I'm trying to get everything but the center line, some of the axis of revolution, because I'm too lazy to do it again. But regardless, let's go and do our hidden line, select our hidden line. And it uh, looks like I accidentally got rid of one of my, or I didn't put in my reference. I want the reference up on this one also. And this reference here I want. So basically what I'm going to do here is just sketch a bigger counter bore. I'm actually going to start up here so that it locks in. Remember, I've got to have it extend as a counter bore and then the hole. And then all the way up. Very good. Now, one dimension that I do want is I want the one from here to here because that is the counter board depth. So there we go. So I'm not going to change the sizes. They're a little bit off. Oop. Keep doing that. Sorry. All right. What I want to do now, though, is see what's going on down here. Do I have a construction? I do have a center line. So I forgot on the last version to show you that again, we want to make sure that we have our, and I'll do it the opposite method. Let's see, there is a line here. So I'm going to click uh, center line. Make sure you pick the line. You get your right mouse button to get the right thing. So you want it to be a line. Center line, little mouse button. And there's our bold circle. Okay, finish the feature, shaded, control D, and we have our cut. And you can see, no matter what happens now to this round, I'm time picking it up. So let's make it um, uh, 15. So whatever we do, it's always going to be cut by the revolve that we put in there for the counter bore. You can put this in there as a counter bore also, but again, depends on where you have your uh, large round here in the sequence on your model tree. Go all the way back. And the last thing that we had done with this is we actually had um, patterned it. And look at the dimensions. So they used an increment of 120 as one of the dimensions. And that's the method they used. Now, they did this because the word axis was not, the option of axis was not here. So you're going to use axis. You don't have to use the dimension. We use the 120 dimension off of one of the, uh, the references, the uh, 
the D30. Okay, so that's why that was done like that. It's an old style way of doing it because the axis pattern was not available, and now it is. So now you just pick the axis and then do it. Now, last thing here, let's uh, I almost forgot, was the um, key seat. And let's look at how they did it, which is to me quite interesting. And a lot of work. They actually put in a uh, datum plate in a slight angle, so it's 90 degrees to the taper, normal to the taper, and then they built all of this. It's a lot of work. So what would have been better? Well, you only really need one line to complete this. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll build this on the opposite side over here. And so I'm going to extrude. I'm going to use my remove material. And I'm going to sketch on the data plane directly opposite from that one. And we'll go into our 2D here. And again, we'll toggle off our, and you want your, let's get rid of all this junk. You do want to see your hidden lines in this one here. Because basically what we're going to do is here's the key seat on the other side. It took a lot of work. Datum plane plus three lines, four lines, etc. So in this case here, we're just going to get some references. I want this as a reference, and I want this as a reference, and I want all the way down as a reference. All the way down. Not up in here so you end up with a little tiny ledge. Do it wrong like we showed you how they did. So we're going to go all the way through the part. So I'll close. And we are going to sketch one line, nothing more. And we're going to make sure that line is parallel to the reference. And we're going to put in one dimension. Well, we have a dimension. I'm sorry, that's the dimension we want. And I can't remember what it is, but we'll make it a little bit smaller. And that's it. That's it. Nothing else. A lot simpler, a lot easier, a lot more correct. Nothing else, right? So, okay. And we want to make sure you can see it's kind of got some arrows here. Let's flip it this way, like so. And our options, let's um, actually let's make it symmetric, like that. A little big. <laughs> I can't remember what the size is supposed to be, but we'll get around it, maybe a little smaller, expand it out. So there's my cut, and you can see it goes all the way through, whereas this one's got a little tiny piece hanging out there, a burr, whatever you want to call it. There's this one, and you can see it passes all the way through, unlike the one that they created, which ends before it comes through this counterbore portion. One line. This completes part two.